Good morning. Good morning. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord Almighty! For my soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home in the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near the altar. O Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, who have set their hearts on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover with pools. They go from strength to strength until each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, O Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, O God of Jacob. Look upon your shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk blameless. O Lord Almighty, blessed is a man who trusts in you. Amen. Well, you can, uh, you can pretty much uh, expect that nothing is going to be normal today. And, Amen. Uh, that's because I'm abnormal, but that's okay. <laughs> but uh, we ask that uh, even though things might be different than what we might normally be used to for Sunday morning, uh, I just respectfully ask that more than anything today, that you would take today to worship the one God who made all of the earth and all of creation, who, uh, who presses us on to, uh, to, to do good works, who, who, uh, who encourages us, who strengthens us, and who loves us. And uh, although some of these songs might be new to you, uh, most of them are fairly easy to learn, and, uh, and uh, we just ask that you worship with us this morning. So if you would, just please uh, stand as we, uh, as we continue our worship this morning.
being a God that loves us, even though we often don't deserve it. And Lord, I pray that for everyone in here, Lord, that you would uh, kindle our hearts, Lord. I pray that uh, we would be able to worship you in spirit and truth, Lord, that, uh, that we would not be so stagnant that, uh, that your name doesn't strive us for, for passion, that uh, your, your sacrifice doesn't press us on to, uh, to praise you with all that we are. And so, Lord, I just pray today, as we come, we bring you our offerings uh, of our worship, of our song, of our instruments, of, of even our monetary later, Lord. I just pray that today, as we give you our all, that uh, we hold nothing back, God. Lord, I, I pray that you would help us to be passionate for your name. And we pray these in your name. Amen. Amen. You can go ahead and have a seat. One of the things that we've learned at, at camp this past week, um, the whole thing was, was based on James. And uh, <laughs> for a little bit of tidbit information, if you guys didn't know, a long time ago, uh, there was a possibility that James was not going to be included in the canon of the Bible. And one of the reasons why is simply because of this. In James 2, 18, it says, that someone will say, you have faith. And I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith but what I do. You believe that there is one God good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. And there's some people that say, well, this is saying that, that Jesus doesn't save, but rather our works save us. And what, instead, what James is saying, he's like, no, no, this is what he's saying. He's saying this, you call yourselves a Christian. And it better show up in every aspect of your life. You say, yeah, I'm a Christian. And people say, oh, yeah, well, look at this. Not that we have to be fruit inspectors, but what he's saying is this. Look, you call yourselves a Christian. So follow Christ. Do what Christ did. Love like he did. Live like he did. If you want to be pure, if you want to be holy, if you want to, if you want to be uh, like Christ which is what Christian means, Christ-like ones, then your deeds better match up with your words. And I'm going to be honest, guys. Today, as, as, as a Christian, it's, it's hard to live that out. With the world so, so fully entrenched in sin, and unfortunately, like us, we absorb it a little too well. Sometimes it's hard to live out your life as such a bright light. But this is what we are called to do. This is what we are called to be as Christians. And this is what the whole week of Alive and Free, when we had our, our student camp, we studied the book of James. We learned out what it meant to live out a Christ-like life. And the first part that, 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 that they did was, uh, oh, here, I'm, I guess I'm supposed to welcome people. I'm sorry, I got someone excited about, uh, about God's word. My bad, but that's okay. Our, our God is holy. So um, I do want to thank you. I, I, I want to welcome you to be here because I'm, I'm really excited if you couldn't tell. Um, you know, we, I've got some students and some, some adults as well that will be sharing uh, how God moved in their life during the week of camp. And uh, as I said, today is going to be a little bit different. 
And you know what? That's okay. Because you know what? God made all of us differently. And if we expect to all worship the same way, then we're all just fooling ourselves. Because there's a reason why he made things like the platypus and me. So I, I, I welcome that. So, um, so I want to thank you. If you're, if you're a visitor here, um, if you could just, uh, I, I think in the bulletin there should be a little slip of paper to just, uh, we'd love to little, know a little bit more about you, to, to, um, to pray with you if you have any prayer concerns, if you have any prayer needs. But we'd like to know a little bit more about you. If you could just fill that out and drop that in the offering as it goes by. And uh, we'd love to know about how we can meet your needs, a little how we can know you. And, uh, and that, that includes you as well, members. If you have some needs, you know, we, have, we pray, and uh, we would love to definitely pray for you because, let's face it, we all have needs that need to be met. And we all have desires that we'd like to see God work in our lives. And so, um, so we'd love to, to do that with you. Um, so at this time, I, I'd like for you guys to, to look around the room and uh, go find someone that's prettier than you and go welcome them today. <laughs> All right, that's enough loving on each other. <laughs> okay. Now, as we uh, as we continue this morning, um, I I've got a. I've got a guy that, that I asked to kind of share for this. The, the first segment that we that we talked on was Act Now. And uh, the basic premise of the lesson was this. Is that, you know, we are called to, as Christians to live out our life of faith. And so if you call yourself a Christian, then now's the time to act out. Either finally come to realize that you're not a Christian and accept them in your life. Stop being so proud and, and realize, you know what? I haven't been living the life. I, I see that I'm something that I'm not. And so I need Christ in my life. And then for, for those Christians, it challenged us to say, you know, look, you know, you say that you're a Christian, but I mean, let's face it, there's areas in all of our lives. You know, I, I shared this with the youth the other day. I said, you know what? How embarrassing would it be if I had a sheet of paper and I listed out everyone's sins in this sanctuary? How would you like to have a share session with that? And some of us would be like, I, you know what, hey, lunch is already calling me, I gotta go. <laughs> but, but that's the cold hard truth. We are sinners and we mess up. But you know what, there's a God that graciously gives us the gift so that we can have eternal life. He forgives our sins and he gives us grace. And so today, uh, to kind of... Uh, to share what this meant in his life. I've got Paul up here, and he's going to be uh, sharing uh, what this
what's on his heart this morning. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my uh, notes. I'm all <laughs> uh, so one of the things, uh, the topics that we discussed was uh, act now. So it's basically learning how to uh, have authentic faith and, and to take action, you know, in, in your life and, and to actually do something about, um, or I should say actually learning to become more uh, faithful. So, and for me, um, this was in the past, you know, I, I knew of, of God. You know, I was raised knowing of Him. But I didn't actually know Him. <clears throat> so, one day, many months ago, I, I had cried out to God because I was going through some things. I was going through things in my life that were not Christian like and and it uh, it was killing me in, inside so I had to cry out to God to save me and uh, and he did and immediately it changed real quick because I, I had to surrender myself and I had to act then and now and uh, he he basically delivered me from the destructive life that I was living in and uh, gave me a new life when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior <clears throat> and the ways which uh, God has called me to act now was to uh, immediately change my lifestyle, which I had to give up, you know, a lot of the things that I was doing. Uh, you know, in, in some cases, some of the people that were in my life that were dragging me back into that old lifestyle. And that's not easy to do, you know, but you got to, <laughs> you have to, to act on that on what God is telling you to do. You, know, you have to be obedient. We're taught that. And, and it's never been more clear to me uh, now. But the way that uh, you know, he completely changed my life by giving me a better attitude, a better outlook on life, and actually uh, teaching me how to, to actually love, you know, because I realized that he loved me with all my faults, no matter what. And so... I, all I can do is to uh, try to fulfill his will and give all myself to the church and, and to the community and, and to him uh, because that's that's what he deserves. That's that's the only way I can show him things, the infinite amount of things that I have for him for changing my life around and, and just completely making me do a 180, which you know, I can't ever thank him enough for that. And so, <clears throat> I had to make the uh, I had to make the I had to take action to, to claim the life that he always wanted for me, which was to live in his word and to do things the way he wanted me to do them. And the actions that that I took, I didn't. They speak louder than words, you know. I didn't have to to tell people that this is what I was doing. People that knew me before already knew that there was a difference because of the way I was leading, changing my life, the way I was actually living. And so in a lot of cases, actions speak louder than words. And I just, I kind of, uh, I had a little scripture here from 1 John 3.18 where it says, Dear children, we must show love through actions that are sincere, not through empty words. So we actually have to to show that what we're doing, or we have to act on what he wants us to do, because through our actions, people will know, you know what our intentions are, if they're, if they're good intentions or not. So, yeah, that's, that's kind of how he's called me to, to act now, is to just completely give myself 100% all that I can, and then some more to, to him and to, uh, to the church and to the community.
Now I've been, had the privilege of uh, knowing Paul before uh, before he was saved. Uh, actually, my, I think our first Sunday visiting was the Sunday that he was being baptized when he got his noggin knocked on the uh, baptistry. <laughs> but uh, you know what? It, it, it has been amazing to see um, just what God is doing in his life and how passionate he is um, for God. And uh, you know what? If, if we as a church could could have you know that passion, that 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 uh, excitement for digging into God's word, that passion for you know for seeing God's glory being then then be a huge thing. And so uh, you know what a change Christ can make in the lives of men. Amen. Uh, and uh, you know that's that's what it's all about. That's why we're here. We're here to go out and to share the passion of Christ with others. To say, hey, you know what? You know, yeah, your life may be broken, but you know what? There's a healer who offers fresh life, who offers a healing, and uh, he welcomes all. And all we have to do is accept that gift. It's on that cross that he died for our sins. If you will, go ahead and stand as we continue our worship.
hard to swallow um, speaks of our tongue. And some of us were like, oh, this again. <laughs> He's going to talk about cussing. <laughs> One of the things that we learned at camp, though, is speaking life is more than just not saying cuss words. Um, it's lifting others up being able to pour into other people's lives. If uh, James is simply saying, look, your tongue can be very dangerous. And we all know that we've hurt lives, we've broken lives, we've destroyed people's hearts with our words. And what James is simply saying is, be careful, the tongue the fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. 
some heavy words to understand. But speaking life is, is not just learning not to say certain words, but also learning to become a Barnabas to others. Being able to lift others up and pouring into their lives and saying, you know what? There's a God that loves you. When you feel broken, when you feel desperate, you know what? There is some worth in you. I have seen some students that have gone through such difficult parts in their lives. I've seen some of them put down by their parents. I've seen some of them put down by their friends. And what they do then is they go out and they live that lifestyle, believing that whatever their parents or whatever their friends or whatever horrible things that they've been told is true. And sometimes it's good to hear that we are a masterpiece made by God. I like to joke and say it like this, when God's made you, he said, I'm never going to do that again. <laughs> and while it is true, he said, you know what, a better way to put it maybe, you know, when God made you, he broke the mold. And I'm not just saying that, you know, it's one of those pick up lines. But, uh, but the truth is, when God made you, he said, there's no one else in this world that's going to be like you. You know, we've got identical twins. Identical. And these girls are nothing alike. If you watch them, you know they're nothing alike. <laughs> um, and so, you know, we have to understand that even, even people that seem so similar, that we are all different, we're all special, and God made us this way for a reason. We may not understand it when we're going through the course of life. I mean, let's face it, sometimes as adults we still don't understand, God, why did you make me? with such a beautiful beard. I don't understand. <laughs> but uh, we may not understand, but we know that, you know what, God made us for a reason. And even when those times when we're broken, when we're hurt, well, maybe even we're destitute and we have nowhere else to go, we know, you know what, there's a God that made me for some reason, even when I don't understand it. Even when, God, why did you make me so broken? God, why did you make me so messed up? God, why am I like this? Why do I have these desires? To please the world instead of pleasing you. And sometimes we do that. But God says, you know what? Don't rely on the world. Don't be a friend of the world. That's what he says later on in James as well. If you're going to be a friend with the world, you're an enemy of God. And sometimes we don't like to hear that. says, look, choose who you're going to serve, the world or God. So today, for Speak Life, I've got uh, David over here. Don't, don't look so scared. <laughs> David's going to share uh, what God did in uh, his life with you. Hello. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> The big thing that the camp was for me was just the worship, because it's just to feel the power of God and the Holy Spirit run through you, it's, it's like I can't even describe it, and that, and uh, just laying your hands on others and praying for them, and you can really just feel the Holy Spirit at that moment in time, it's, it's nothing that I can even use a word to explain. I think the whole idea of Speak Life is just I, something I really thought about in my life. I mean, I don't all the time, and, and uh, no, no one's perfect, but you know, it's just the words you say to someone and the things you do can definitely influence your, your uh, witness on whoever around you. Just whether it's your slip or it's just something you say all the time, I mean, it's just something that you may impact someone's life forever. And, uh, run them away from Christ, and that's just a big, big thing when you, uh, just what you say, because one word, or the way you act, or the way you are, I mean, not the way you are, but, you know, just the things you say, and the way you are around people can impact your witness majorly, and uh, forever, and you may forever run that person away from Christ, and that's just the thought of that and having to answer for that in heaven is just scary. <laughs> and uh, that's me. One of my favorite.
favorite uh, moments at camp. We uh, they, they give us devotionals that we're supposed to go over every night and uh, uh, as a group together. And uh, uh, oftentimes, even though I go over them and read them, I, I, I sometimes just throw them out the window because of, of what the group is learning as, as our kids are learning. And uh, that night that we did Speak Life, I, I, I was about ready to you know, say, hey guys, let's you know, really talk about how our words affect others. And, and I was like, you know what, instead of talking about it, let's, let's, let's practically live this out. And we had this just awesome session where it went way longer than it should have, but, well, not than it should have, but it went way longer than our allotted time. And it was amazing. What we did was everyone in the group, we had, we spoke life to each other. We went around the circle and, and we told others about what we admired about them and, and, and you know, some qualities that we found uh, awesome. And, and it was an amazing thing to be able to, you know, I don't know how you guys felt, but I mean, it was amazing to, to learn, wow, there's someone else that finds something valuable in my life. And, and I never, never realized how they felt. And so sometimes, you know, it helps to understand, you know, because at one point or another, we've all felt that uh, someone give an encouraging word and you're like, wow, that made all, all the difference. Or that made my day. Or made me get through a rough day. And so instead of being the one who's always like, you know, hey, give me, give me encouragement, give me encouragement, give me encouragement, we can live out our lives like Barnabas and be the encourager. Be the one to say, hey, you know what? You're special. God loves you. And speak life into them. Because sometimes we do tend to, you know, I, I'm, I'm a youth pastor and, and my spiritual gifts are sometimes sarcasm and giving people a hard time. And so, <laughs> for those of you guys that went on the campaign, you, you, you know how I am. <laughs> but, uh, but also to learn on the other aspect of learning to, to lift others up. I mean, it's, it's such an amazing thing. And, uh, you know, it, it, it coincides with Philippians 2 and also going on in James 4. It says, you know, what causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You want something, but you don't get it. You kill and you covet, but you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world is hatred towards God? Anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. I think this is something that we need to grasp because we're a selfish people. We want what we want. And, and let, let me say, I, I understand, you know, even this worship today for some of you guys are like, I don't like these songs. And if no one's ever told you, let me tell you now. It's not about you. Amen. What it is, it's about praising God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. And we can do that with slow songs. We can do that with hymns. We can do that with praises. We could do that with the guitar. You know, like, like the psalmist says, you know, praise him, praise him with basically any instrument you've got. <laughs> praise God. Amen. And I, I understand sometimes it's uncomfortable. Sometimes someone might sit in our seat and we're like, I selfishly want my seat. I, I've been at church more than a few times, and I'm, I, I go up there, I'm like, oh, where do I sit now? Because, I mean, you know my family, we take up a whole stinking row, so. <laughs> and so, you know, sometimes it can be hard, because let's face it, we're selfish. That's just here in the church. What about when we go out in the world? When someone's getting off on that ramp and we're like, selfishly, you know, this is my spot. <laughs> I had a pastor, he said, you know, I, I, never, I never put any Christian symbols on my car because I don't want to be a bad witness to everyone else when I'm driving. <laughs> Try to tell him that was the Holy Spirit convicting him, but. Uh, <laughs> but really, we're selfish people. That's just what it boils down to. We have these wants and desires. We chase after what we want. We think, you know, God made it happen, so it must, it must be what he wants. But instead, he's sometimes letting us flounder in our own sin, making the wrong decisions, because selfishly we wanted something, and God said, no. 
but sometimes we're too hard-hearted to listen. That's all part of bowing down. That's all part of submitting our lives to Him. Of saying, not my will, but yours. That's what, I love, that's what I love Philippians 2. It's probably one of my favorite Bible verses is that actually that whole chapter simply because if you have strife in the church, you want to know how to fix it? Be humble. Don't think of yourself better than others. Think of others as better than yourself. I mean, that's what Christ did. When he knew that Judas was going to betray him, he still got on his hands and his knees and he washed his feet. He laid his life down for those people that crucified him. And, and, and he humbled himself to the point of death. The creator who had no beginning came on earth to have a beginning so that he can meet an end. I don't think we can fully understand the depth of that. Of that humility. Where he says, I've got all the power in the world yet he chose to die for us. I don't know about you, but that should, that should blow you away every time you think about it. About that cross of the price that he paid. I mean, because, I mean, I'll, I'll be okay if, you know, someone dies for me, absolutely, that'd be awesome, because as long as I don't have to die. I mean, especially, you know, if he's a bad guy, it's even better. But you know what? How about the perfect almighty creator who didn't deserve it did it anyway? That's humility. That's bowing down. He gave his life so that we could have life. And that's how we're supposed to live ours. To surrender ourselves, to surrender our will, to surrender our desires, to bow down and say, God, use me in whatever way you want. I've got, uh, I've got Sarah to kind of share what she's got on, on this. And, uh... Hey guys. Um, <clears throat> so bowing down was really important for me because during that day, before we actually got together, I was coming to the point where I realized that God was breaking my life and breaking everything bad out of my life and breaking me so that I could be the godly woman that he wants me to be and that I need to be. And so, after... <laughs> Whoa. And so I had a lot of bad things in my life, especially after my dad passed away. I started doing all these crazy things, and I was hanging out with the wrong people, and I was doing the wrong things, and I wasn't representing God like I should. And so, okay, well, and so all of those things started going out of my life, and new things started coming in, like the youth group, and Joe, and now I rededicated my life to God and it was really important for me that I started living my life like I should and so I have been bowing down you need to be humble and you need to put God before you and before anyone else and that was really hard for me because I was always about me instead of about other people and about God and so you just gotta be able to put yourself before, I mean, put God before yourself and before everyone else, and you need to be obedient to God and follow his rules that he has set for you in the Bible, and so. So today, uh, it's another new song that we learned, that we learned at camp, and it's quite simple, but amazingly powerful, and so, uh, once again, you probably don't know it, and that's okay. But uh, I ask that you would absorb these words, own these words, and then when you feel comfortable, sing these words. Um. 
Why don't you stand as we continue? Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. Sing that one more time. Here's my heart. Here's my Got worried for a second there. About ready to pass a hat or something. Uh, let's go ahead and pray. God, we thank you so much uh, for these offerings that we're about to receive. And, and God, I, I thank you. I thank you for, for just uh, what you've done in these students' lives. And I, I thank you what you continue to do in their lives. God, I pray that you would rise them up and, and uh, use them in a godly way. Help them to, to not just realize they're just, you know, they're, they're not just youth. But they are a part of the church, the part of the body of Christ. And, and God, I pray that uh, you would use them in such a mighty way that you would rise up men and women who uh, are not ashamed of your light and not ashamed of your word and not ashamed to go out into the world and make your name known. So, Lord, as we just come and, and we bring you our offerings today, Lord, I pray that they would just be a, um, a beautiful sacrifice in your name. 
We just pray these in your name. Amen. Amen. We had a, a total of uh, 14 uh, people go to camp, and uh, it was it was an amazing experience. Or at least 14 from our church. There was a little bit more at the camp, <laughs> but uh, you know we it, it was it was pretty amazing to, to see throughout the week how God was moving and 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 to see some students get broken, and uh, because you know what. If we remain hard-hearted, you know, God can't really deal with it, with our sin, with our hard-heartedness, unless at first we become a broken people. Right. And so it, it was it was amazing to see, you know, God, you know, speak into their lives to bring them closer to know who he is. And and uh, so the final point on this one is, is to stay true. 
And uh, we have a tendency sometimes to not do that. Our fire for the Lord one day might be passionate than other days. Depends on what side of the bed we woke up on, right? And so I want to I want to encourage all of us um, to be able to live out that life, to stay true, to be passionate about Him, no matter what. Sometimes what we do is is we, you know, the things of the world they pull us away from God, and the way that we used to be passionate for His name, uh, and. Uh, I want to encourage you, you know, if you want to rekindle that flame, a lot of it is getting back into his word, um, getting back in with the fellowship, because some people say, well, I can go and have church at home. You know what? The Bible also says don't give up meeting with one another, because it's here that we find tools to sharpen one another, tools to hold us accountable, because let's face it, when that sin does turn our way and we start to mess up, it really helps to have someone in our life to smack us upside the head and say, what are you doing? And so I want to encourage you, if you want to get back to be passionate, you know, to stay true to his name, it requires commitment. Hey, JJ, you ready? <laughs> yeah. But we, we were really excited uh, for this week. I got a different one for you, JJ. <laughs> well, we know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How are everybody doing today? That works great. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I'm just. Uh, I just want to talk about like how you can continue to live in like God. You know that God lived through. <laughs> making the right choices. Because I learned over, I, when I was at camp, I learned that I was, I believed in God, I had God accepted into me, but I didn't like live by Him, like live right by Him. I do whatever I wanted to during the weekends and on Sunday, I mean during the weekend and on Sunday, come to church and think everything was all right because I was, you know, I believed in God. So I learned that wasn't true. I learned that you have to live by him, you have to live in his word, you know, act like he would want you to act, act as if Jesus was in the room at all times, you know, that's all I have to say. No. I love the idea of, of what you said, act like Jesus is in the room at all times, because sometimes we forget that. There was a story uh, behind uh, one of my favorite hymns, and uh, kind of what we're going to have our invitation at it. The story of a man named Robert Robinson, and uh, he was passionate about Christ. At a young age, he came to know Christ, and and because of his passion for Christ, he started writing hymns and he started writing these songs to give glory to God. And, uh, and in his younger years, he, he wrote out this song, he penned out these words, to come thou fount of every blessing. And, you know, some of these words are just phenomenal, you know, sung by flaming tongues above, praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming well. And yet he also knew that, that while his heart was passionate, he also knew that his heart had a tendency to stray away. And so he also penned the words prone to heart, <laughs> prone to wander my heart. And, and so he understood that, that you know what, that, that while his love was passionate, he knew that sometimes he would stray away. And sure enough, as he grew later on in life, he grew hard to God. And it got to the point where he didn't want to have anything at all to do with God. And he, he basically said, just, just stay away from me, God. And, uh, but yet God's love is passionate in his pursuit. And later on in life, as uh, Robert Robinson was on a carriage, because uh, that's how they traveled back in those days, and since it was expensive, he shared the carriage with someone else. And, uh, and of course, the lady shared that she was a Christian, and of course, he was like, how great. 
nowhere else that you would rather be than there and within that with that Christian. And so, of course, she was passionate about sharing it, and he is, of course, a captive Oz at the audience. He was either that or being run over by the chariot, and, uh, or the carriage. And, and so he, uh, he stood, he sat in there and had to listen to her, and, and uh, she was reading one of her books, and uh, it was a devotional. And back in that day, they would use hymn books as devotionals. And she, she said, sir, I know you're not really into Christianity, but I, I can't get my head wrapped around these words right here. I, I, I don't understand what the artist is saying, and, 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 and it's just too heady for me. Is there any way that you can try to make any sense of this? And so he's like, okay, whatever. And, you know, there's nothing else I can do. So she, she pulls it towards him, and he looks at it, and he's faced with the words that he wrote when he was younger. Prone to wander in my heart, I feel it. Prone to leave the guy I love. And uh, Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God. And so that's the story of Robert Robinson. And what he did in that moment, in that time, he broke down. See, God broke his hardened heart. Because he knew that, that even though he was prone to, to, to turn away from God, even though he, he was passionate at first. As he got older, he turned further and further away from God. And so I want to encourage you, as we live out our lives as Christians, understand that, yeah, we're humans. But you know what? We're also redeemed. We have a God that loves us. And we have a God that, that wants us to stay with him, to stay true, and to glorify him at all times. And so as we have our invitation at the time, in, in a little bit, uh, John, Pastor John's going to come down, and, and uh, if, if you feel God speaking to your heart, maybe to accept him, or, or maybe even just rededicate your life, um, maybe if you want to, you know, you want to join and be a part of our church, you know, we, or even just pray, the altars are open as well. So I want to encourage you, you know, if God's speaking to you today, and and, uh, um, you know, just feel free to go ahead and, and take that time to, uh, um, to respond to, to what he's saying in your heart. You would just rise as we... Come out of mountains, every blessing stood my heart to sing that
gracious God. And I pray that that whatever decisions people have made today, Lord, whether in their, their seats or whether in their hearts, or God, uh, I just pray that for everyone in here, Lord, that you would work in our lives to make yourself greater and us less. God, help us to live out that Christ-like life that when people see us, we are a light in the darkness, a city on the hill. We pray these in your name. Amen. Amen. Now, before you go, we have a few announcements. We do have uh, uh, our normal activities. We do have, uh, uh, we do have uh, our...